the story behind the story of Cecily G. More than a hundred years ago, Margaret Wallstein and Hans Augusto Reiersbach, now known as H.A. Ray, were born in Hansburg, Germany. Growing up, Marguerite and Hans both loved animals. Hans and his family lived only a few streets from the famous Hagenbeck Zoo, and there he learned to imitate the roar of a lion, the bark of a seal, and the quiet, quick chatter of monkeys. At home, he spent all his free time drawing. After he grew up, Hans became a writer and an artist. So did Marguerite, who attended a famous art school at Rawhouse. There she studied photography, and soon after this, Marguerite, who had a mind of her own, shortened her name to Margaret. This is Marguerite when she's a little girl, and this is a picture that Hans drew when he was young. Hans and Marguerite were travelers as well, and during their long lives, the Rays lived in Germany, then Brazil, then France, and then the United States. Three continents. Each time they lived in a new city, Margaret and Hans made visits to the local zoo and took their camera and sketchbooks. In Brazil, Margaret and Hans saw lots of monkeys. They even had two little ones called marmosets as pets. They were wide benches near the Ray's apartment in Rio de Janeiro and palm trees and the ocean. On August 16, 1935, Marguerite Walstein and Hans Reiersbrock were married, and they became Brazilian citizens. Hans began to sign his work as H.A. Ray, because his new name was easier for his clients to say and to remember. Months later, in 1936, the Rays left Rio on a ship and headed to Europe for a honeymoon, where they stayed at the Trust Hotel in Paris, and since there were many artists who also lived in this neighborhood, known as Montmartre, Margaret and H.A. decided to settle in France, live in their hotel apartment, and find work. In elegant Paris, Hans loved to draw and paint, and Margaret enjoyed words and text. Sometimes she'd help H.A. to make his watercolor paintings even better. Over the next two years, Hans had a few books published, but they were for grown-ups, not children. One morning, Hans sat at his desk in the tourist apartment, smoking his pipe and daydreaming, as he often liked to do, and then to earn some money, he picked up his pencil and drew an illustration of a giraffe, and he signed his name, H.A. Ray. The picture was full of gentle humor because Hans liked people to smile when they saw his artwork. H.A. Ray's funny giraffe was soon printed in a French magazine. Just days later, a French editor called Jacques Chiffrin sat at his desk at the Guildmard, a famous publishing house in Paris, paging through a magazine. He stopped reading and smiled. What a marvelous giraffe! Jacques Dot, jotted down the artist's name, H. A. Ray. Hmm. Then he called the office of the Paris Magazine and asked Monsieur Ray's address and phone number, Hotel Paris, 12 Rue Joseph de Jacques Chiffon was a fine editor, and he thought the giraffe would make a character in a book for children. He was sure that his own son, little Andre, who wasn't old enough to read yet, would love looking at such a book. Soon Hans signed a contract with Gugmard for the Ray's very first book for children. Margaret and H.A. chuckled as they plotted the story in their room at the dress. Hmm, the giraffe would be the star, and her name would be Raffi. Raffi was sad because her family had been carried off to, to a zoo. And since the rays loved monkeys, and so did children, Hans drew a mother monkey and named her Madame Pomplemousse. Then he drew her eight children, Zozo, Soroko, Zigzag, Cactus, Carabi, Caraba, Caraba, Carabi, Caribou, and Fifi, who was the youngest monkey. Hmm. Margaret and Hans talked some more and slowly built their story, scene by scene. On a journey to find a new house, the monkeys met Raffi and have antics with, hmm, how about skis? The rays had seen skis in Germany. Hmm, and stilts. The rays had seen stilts at the circus. They both loved the circus. Hmm, and parachutes, because umbrellas look like parachutes. And a fire hose? Oh, there's always commotion in the fire. Since the rays enjoyed music and, like, children, they made up a little song to include the last page of the book. Jacques Stefan edited the story and pictures, and in 1939, the book was published in France. The book had a handsome green cover, and a few months later, after World War II began, it was also published in England as Raffi and the Nine Monkeys. Marguerite and Hans had hopes that Raffi would be published in the United States, but the war in Europe made their plans too difficult. In early June of 1940, the battles of war were in France, near Paris. Thousands. Then millions of French refugees had to flee as Hitler's German tanks and troops 
swept for the capital. Since the rays had no car and few trains were running, Hans hurried to a villo shop, but all the bikes were sold out. So he bought spare parts and assembled two bicycles all by himself. The next morning at dawn, Margaret and Hans joined a flood of refugees on the rainy roads south of Paris. The date was June 12, 1940. Like the nine monkeys, the rays were on their own journey to find a new home. But theirs was a much more dangerous one. Margaret and Hans were born German Jews, and anyone who was Jewish was at risk at Hitler's Europe, even those with Brazilian passports. In the basket strapped to the bicycles were a few belongings, including a copy of Raffi and the Nine Monkeys and some unpublished manuscripts, including the story the Rays were working on about this monkey, Fifi, who appeared in Raffi's book. Fifi was the star of the story, and he was always into mischief. And he had a friend, a man with a yellow hat, who smoked a pipe, just like Hans did. By bicycle and train, and by sleeping in a barn, in a school, and on the floor of a restaurant along the way, Margaret and H.A. escaped across the French border into Spain and traveled down to Lisbon, Portugal. From there they sailed on a ship, the Angola, to Brazil, and then they took another ship to New York City. Finally, on October 14, 1940, a cold, sunny day, the Ray's boats sailed past the Statue of Liberty into New York Harbor. A few weeks later, they met Grace Hogarth an American editor who already knew the Rays, as she had worked for their publisher in England. Soon after, Hans signed a contract for four books, including the one about the monkey Fifi. Mrs. Hogarth suggested that George would be a stronger name than Fifi, so the book was published in 1941 as Curious George. <clears throat> Grace Hogarth also looked through Raffi and the Nine Monkeys, <clears throat> which she had read and admired in when she worked in England. Now she wanted to publish in America. Hmm. Raffi needed a few changes to appeal to readers in the United States. In their apartment in New York City, Margaret and Hans rewrote some of the text and made up new names for all the characters, except for one. Raffi became Cecily G, G for Giraffe, and the monkeys became Baby Jenny, Curious George, James, Johnny, Arthur, David, and Punch and Judy, who were twins. Mother Pumplemousse kept her original name. So, in 1942, 65 years ago, when this book was written, Cecily G and the Nine Monkeys was published in America by... Houghton Mifflin, and has been in print ever since. How lucky for the Rays that one day long ago in Paris, Hans' drawing of a giraffe caught the attention of Jacques Chiffron, and how wonderful that the kind-hearted Raffi, known as Raffi, was down with Cecily G, was with them from the very beginning, along with Mother Pomplemousse's little monkey Fifi, who would later have his own adventures and narrow escapes as the beloved Curious George, and how very remarkable that Hans and Margaret made their wartime journey safely. They found friendship, creative work, and a new home in America. And like the nine monkeys, they decided to stay. <laughs>